Beth and I, we bought a house about three months ago, and um, I've been I've been working on it about every evening since we got it, trying to do things that uh, I couldn't do when we moved in. And uh, during the process, or I should say right before we bought it, of course, all the information on the house was disclosed. And we found out that um, the man that lived next door, him and his wife, their fence was well into the property that we would be purchasing. We well, looked at the laws on that, which could very well have been in his favor. Um, it doesn't take much in this state, a lot of states, to be able to claim property if you've been using it for a while. Well, that's just the way it is, but um, his fence was as much as uh, like 20 feet. And into yeah, he was taking tw about 20 feet on one end and 10 feet on the other, <clears throat> and it's about a, it was about three quarters of an acre. And I told Beth, I said I had to make a decision out of all the houses we looked at. I said I would take this house even if we lost that strip of property on the other side of those trees. I said because I can't necessarily use it, but more importantly, it's five minutes from here, and that's what I was wanting. And we had been looking and looking and looking, and. Uh, we just couldn't get things to line up and this was the best house we found for the money even if we lost that piece of land so I decided we'll take it regardless but I was determined to try and get it since it was ours so here's here's what happened and I want to get to the part I felt like what Jesus did about this was so sweet it's one of the things where I just felt like I saw God at work in such a big way it just melted I met the neighbor who had the fence <clears throat> not in a conversation about the fence, but just introducing myself after we had purchased the place. And my first meeting with him was after I had noticed he would never look up at me when I was outside, which was often. And everybody else around the neighborhood there had, had uh, come over and talked to us and everything, and he wouldn't even look up. And when I finally did get his attention just to say hello, um, he was a very looming presence. He came right up to me, he was taller than me, he intentionally towered over me, and was assertive and defensive. And all I was was just introducing myself, and it wasn't, it wasn't, it was just a little over the line where you're like, ooh, he's ready for something. And I thought, he must know about that fence, surely. But I didn't say anything about it. I didn't feel like it was time yet. But I wanted to introduce myself. Then I had an opportunity a second time to talk to him, just say, hey, how are you doing? We're working in and out. And, oh, you know, we're here about every day and just letting him know. And that same thing. Well, I guess it was it was either around right then or the next week I saw him again and I was like now I'm gonna have to say something to him and I brought the survey that I had and showed him that his fence was over on our property well into the property when I showed it to him um, he looked like he had a stroke in front of me his face looked like it went about half paralyzed when he was talking start drooping while he was talking I've seen that before when people get under heavy stress and he was so upset and <clears throat> taken aback and uh, with an undertone of aggression about I'm going to have to look at this and was really a certain his place like he didn't like it he was going to look at it and I was like ooh that's, that's not good it wasn't long after that that I saw him again and he said I'm looking into that just as mean and awful as, as I'm describing and then enough time had passed that I was going to go back over there with my survey and I was like I've got to do something Now's the time. I've got to go ahead and call him on it. What are we doing? Where are you at? Are you going to concede that it's my property or are we going to have to maybe go to court or whatever? And as I was preparing for that meeting with him that evening, I was at the house looking at his house and knew when I walked outside up near the property line, I knew he'd come out because I was going to intentionally get in view of where he was at. I knew it was going to happen because I kind of knew his routine a little bit. And I prepared myself inside for a fight I knew I was coming. Right before I got to the point to engage with him, right before, just seconds before, I let that thing go. Because I knew this man was, I, I was expecting a confrontation that may even be physical because of his anger and his aggression I can have. And that's what I was prepared for. I let go of being prepared for that. And in my heart, I was like, God, I'm just going to lay down my sword. Whatever he does, if he just wants to pummel me, he can just pummel me. I'm not going to do that. And when I got that attitude and got in line with him, it wasn't seconds later he came out that door and he was a completely different man. Mm -hmm. He came out, his countenance was completely different. And he said, 
I looked at that. I got a surveyor out here. I'm sorry. He said, I've been there for 16 years. I thought that was my property. My fence been there that long. He said, I already had it surveyed once. They didn't do it right. He said they were wrong. He said, I never meant for it to be this way. He was a completely different person. And I was like, God, what I just saw, when I was willing to do it God's way, then God made him in a different human being. And I mean, it was a miraculous. To me, it was miraculous. It was like a charging animal stopping in his track. Wow. I was shocked by it. I was humbled by it. So sweet. Within two weeks, he had his fence pulled up, moved, had been over and telling me twice that he was on it. It had been raining. He was working on it. Mm -hmm. A completely different man lives next door. Yeah. And if I had went over there and not laid down what I was coming over there with, I may have a neighbor that I have contention with that I'll never be able to tell about Jesus mm -hmm. because there'd never be a problem. And that's what I asked God at the last minute was not to ruin that yeah. regardless of the fence. And he fixed it. And you know what? That could change tomorrow. Something, it could, anything could change. It'd be up to Jesus. But right now, he made a change that was so miraculous in front of me. I've just never seen anything like it. I know it was God. And I want to add something else. I feel like when I laid that down, even defending myself, which, you know, you can justify that. That's irrelevant. It's either God or it's not God, whatever you're doing. But I felt like when I laid that down, there was a spirit with it. Amen. Even though it was defending myself, it was a spirit. Because when I laid it down, I changed. I felt different. And I had another experience like that with that house where God did something really sweet for me. He put so much on me that I couldn't defend myself anymore. To, to summarize, the uh, JR came over and helped us paint. All the paint was defective and round down the walls. All had to be scraped off to be able to redo it. At the same time, the best carpet company in town laid three rooms of carpet. It was all defective. You could put your holes through it, hands through it, fingers through it, and it had bleach marks along the edge, and they missed it. Then at the same time, the air conditioning quit over to Alamance Roadhouse, where I worked from home, and I was there all day, and it was 80-something degrees, and I was burning up. And then I got an email in the middle of our destructive mess of trying to change and move and all that, and the company that we leased that house from said, we're coming in the morning. We're coming tomorrow. We want to inspect that house. When all that happened, I had went from trying to juggle every bit of what I was doing, and it was more and more was being added, and I was doing it. And when the final thing landed on me, I just let it all go. And as soon as I let it all go, I realized that all that time and all of my life, I've been trying to manage the results, and that the results are God's business. Amen. My job, all the times in my life that I have mistreated people who were under me when I got under stress, when I was at work, when I would get under, because it all comes downhill, if it's there at all, comes downhill, and what I do with it is my business, and when I would pass that down, and I would put that push on them, and God would correct me as he did over and over again, it's because I was trying to manage the results, and the results are his business, and that's what he was telling me. My job was to do the best job I could do. It didn't matter if I worked long, that wasn't the point. Do the best job I could do in the spirit that he gave me, not leave that place, and then he would manage the results. And one plus one does not equal two. One plus one equals what God said it does. <laughs> and he makes it work out. Or not. Yeah, no matter what you right. do. Amen. Amen. And when I let that go, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Because I was free. And it's the first time I've ever felt that way in my whole life. I was free. <laughs> and I didn't even know. And I was like, God, you've been trying to fix that in me my whole life. And I didn't know what it was or how to even. But he broke my back. And when he did, I was so happy. <laughs> it filled my body. It threw, and you know what? It's all working out just fine. But it's okay if it don't. It's okay if it don't. As long as I don't leave the place I'm supposed to. Amen. That's right. That's right. <laughs>